Hi, this is John Hill for the Sim Pit, and this is uh, my Over the Hill segment. And um, I uh, chose this time to talk about um, leagues. I don't know if a lot of people talk about leagues, but um, I've been doing leagues since I started sim racing a long time ago with the Xbox, with Forza, um, things like that, uh, first online racing. And um, the reason why leagues were so important back then is everybody knows if you got in a Forza back then, you had three lap races, people crashed in you all the time. It was just a horrible mess. And uh, then I had to research it, and I noticed there was a couple of leagues that had uh, full damage on, no assist. That's what I wanted. I didn't want any assists. And... Um, there really weren't a lot of places I could go. So I, I found something called the IFCA, and I started participating in that. And back then, Forza only had, you could only put eight guys in a room. So when we did our first Le Mans race, uh, I think it was 2.4 hours, we had a whole bunch of different rooms, and we had everybody start exactly on the same time. And that's how we did it. So we were always trying to figure out what we could do with the limitations the game had. Um, later on, uh, I decided Race Pro was better than Forza, so I looked for a league on that. I was only able to find one league that had uh, uh, no assist, full damage. And I believe that was uh, Race Car World Series or Race World Series. And that was great, and that's where, I, I mentioned this before a bunch of times, but that's when I, uh, Jan Martinborough used to race with us, who eventually went on to win the uh, GT Academy, one of the GT Academies, but also went on to become one of the most successful real-life racers that came out of sim racing. Uh, he's currently in Japan doing the GT500. Um, so anyway, leagues have been great, and... They were really necessary back then because we didn't have a choice and uh, you, you didn't want to be in the main room with everybody uh, crashing and, and all that stuff. So let me tell you about the latest one I did and why all this stuff is up here. It was uh, part of uh, Lionheart on iRacing, a league that ran exclusively IndyCars, Oval and Road. And it was a long season. It was almost the whole year. Uh, virtually the whole year, and uh, I jumped in with Sean on the Simpit team. Sean had to bow out because he just he missed too many races. He was just too busy, so I, I kept the mantle going. And I'm not the fastest guy, but I'm actually one of the safest sim racers uh, around. And uh, all of this was because I won the award for the cleanest driver uh, in the Lionheart series. Now, there's a whole bunch of awards in the Lionheart series. It is a pay-to-enter thing, but you get back so much out of it, and you get broadcasted races, which everybody seems to want to be in because, uh, quite frankly, we're all hams. Um, anyway, so this series, um, the, the combined toll of cash and, and, and prize values for the whole thing was $9,652. Uh, I came in 20th, which is not saying that much, but I got $10 for that. But then I won $50 for the cleanest driver. And then I got all of these other things. Now, you can imagine if I got all this for the cleanest driver, you can imagine what the championship winner got, Adam Blocker. Uh, he just won everything. He won the road contest, the the Oval Team Championship, the Ironman, and he almost won the cleanest driver on top of that. I just barely beat him and one other guy, and it all happened on the last race. Um, anyway, so this is all I got. Uh, a, a nice hat, a book. I had a choice of books, shot glasses, um, a handy uh, um, uh, refrigerator mirror. We all need these, of course. Uh, some real racing gloves, uh, cart racing gloves, and uh, these things are nice. They're really nice. A lanyard, a uh, couple of t-shirts. I had my choice of a bunch of t-shirts, and I also had um, 
a die-cast model, the Dan Weldon Memorial one, and I've got so many models at home. Look, look at this. This is uh, a chaparral from when I was a kid back in the day. So this would be about 1964, 1965. I haven't even opened it. So I said, um, no thanks on the die cast, and I got a nice little cash payout instead. So anyway, um, let's see. Th this is what it is. If, if, you, if you don't like being in a, an official race where your IR and your SR can be affected by crashes and things like that, or, you know, in many ways, league racing is more like real racing in the sense that Formula One, all the IMSA championships, everything, you're IndyCar, you're racing with the same guys. You know who's going to be there every time. So you know their, your, their strengths and you know their weaknesses. So you've got that. It's a one and done thing, which is really cool. Uh, it's frustrating if you get taken out on the first lap, but, but that, there's another skill, how to get through the first lap, how to do this, and how to finish in the end, how to work it out. So you, you've got a lot of advantages to the league, and, and it really, if you still want to do open uh, official races and iRacing or any other thing, um, you can still do it. So I, I've been doing both. And um, so this is a, a, this is, I'm not saying everybody won this, but it's something to aspire to, and it's not bad for coming in 20th place and still winning all this. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, there, there are so many leagues in iRacing, but then you also have leagues in a settled Corsa. You've got a sim racing system, which has um, races from all the other different sims, and it's worth it to check out. Most of you probably already know about leagues, but if some of you don't, uh, you Google it, you look for what you're looking for, and it should be there. So. That's it. I just want to say thank you to Lionheart, uh, George and Anzaldo uh, organizes this. You always need somebody in a league that is really organized and is committed to the league because really it's a lot of work. And George has really been good at getting other people to help him and he's been great at getting sponsors for the series. And uh, I think a lot of people aspire to a league with this kind of commitment to excellence. And I think uh, Lionheart really provided it for me. And, I, and I, I gotta thank them for the opportunity to race in that series. But um, yeah, check out a league. If you've never done league racing, check it out. It's worth your time. And that's it for me. Thank you from the Simpit and uh, John Hill over the hill. Check me out on his um, YouTube website. I've got videos there. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Adios. Got to give a shout out to um, John Hill. He's done a good job starting 16th. He's all the way up to 11th. He's in that Rookie of the Year battle as well. And he's got a little bit of uh, some, some points to make up, but he's doing a good job getting up into the 11th spot. Yeah, I'm going back to my notes here and, and pulling up that Rookie of the Year standings uh, on my side. And... Uh, you know that 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 was all. It was like this last year too. It's one of the more competitive, uh, you know, championships they've got here, and it, it's great. Uh, but uh, you know, Hill kind of came into it with 48 points, and uh, you know, we mentioned he's not quite out of it. He just needs a few things to go his way. But on the driver standing side of things here too, I mean, he was. Uh, uh, you know, he wasn't looking too bad there. He was outside the top 16, but I think he was just outside the top. So I think he was 17th or 18th. And the thing to note, though, is next week we go to Auto Club, and and that's a that's a triple crown race, Richie. And that means that means double points.